So as I, as I told you earlier, uh, this, uh, this session is a talk shortened from a, a, long, a, long, uh, a long workshop, a three hour long workshop, so we shorten some uh, things a bit. So when it comes to, uh, to uh, deploying on Kubernetes uh, tradi in, a traditional, um, in, a, in a traditional way, uh, we've got uh, using, uh, ops teams use kubectl or elm uh, to deploy. On peut pas avoir le retour? Non, on peut pas. On peut pas avoir le retour. OK, fine. Uh, and it comes with uh, several issues, uh, and that's why GitOps uh, do exist. Um, we don't have uh, traceability uh, on um, uh, several cluster uh, scale. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, tracking of uh, the history of our changes. And we have, uh, most, of, most of all, we've got security issues. We have to keep secret, we have to transmit this, this secret to our CI CD tool. Uh, we have to uh, get connections uh, between the runner, the, the, the CI runner, and the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster, and so on. So it's quite a back practice. And then uh, come GitOps, as you may, say, uh, as you may know. Uh, and what is GitOps? Uh, GitOps is first, first of all, uh, GitOps is a way to deploy uh, by uh, keeping a single source of truth uh, in Git. Uh, and so, as it comes with Git, it comes with every uh, pattern, every collaboration pattern that we can have in Git. So, uh, PR, branches, tagging, um, blaming, and so on. Uh, it, re it, uh, it relies, and what we do, uh, what we do love uh, with Flux is that it's uh, a very uh, keep it stupid simple tool. And uh, as a key tool, it relies um, mostly on the um, reconciliation loop of Kubernetes. So this tool is just by um, uh, feeding Kubernetes with the, de the desired state, and then uh, it's Kubernetes that, that does uh, what it, uh, what it, what it uh, masters, um, that is uh, deploying uh, resources. Uh, it simplifies the management of uh, clusters since the uh, 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 one single source of truth uh, can, um, re um, can address the configuration to many clusters. And it keeps track of any change just as a, a CVS uh, system uh, does. Flux is just one tool that uh, does, uh, that really well does uh, DevOps. Um, it provides uh, GitOps uh, for um, any kind of configuration and, and any kind of resources uh, regarding Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. Uh, you just push uh, to Git, and then uh, it's Flux that um, watch this, uh, this configuration and feed uh, Kubernetes, and then Kubernetes does uh, the deployment. Uh, it works with, with all your existing tool, uh, including your text editors and so on. Um, uh, for an example, uh, I performed this talk uh, in another conference in France, and uh, my cluster, uh, the, the demo uh, went off, uh, the network went off, and so I just uh, do all the demo by uh, using the, the, the Flux CLI and just um, uh, displaying the, the configuration file since it's almost all, all uh, the magic of Flux that, is, that relies on, the, on, this, uh, on these things. Uh, Flux relies mostly on customize, um, half of, the, half of uh, what we show to today is uh, uh, customized tricks uh, to, uh, to um, override uh, some, um, some configuration, to aggregate some configuration and so on. So um, customize works very, um, very um, uh, nearly to, uh, to flex. Of course, it's designed with security in mind. So uh, as, as far as uh, Flux uh, has uh, read-only uh, access rights to uh, your uh, Git sources, uh, it works. And of course, uh, Flux must be installed on your cluster cabinet, on your Kubernetes cluster. Um, of course, um, what we will show you is a multi-tenant example of what we can do uh, with, um, with Flux. And uh, it embeds uh, alerts and notification uh, to notify operation guys or eventually um, uh, t uh, dev teams uh, that, uh, that deployment um, are, are performed. 
Uh, in a sum up, uh, this is the, the um, schema of uh, how uh, of the components um, of flux on a, on a cluster way, on a cluster side. Um, pl um, in addition to these uh, this components, there is a single CLI, which is uh, used uh, mostly to bootstrap uh, files, uh, as, we can, as, we can see, as we can see later uh, during this, uh, this talk. <coughs> Uh, main, uh, mostly, we've got uh, three operators that are the source controller, which is just watching several kinds of, of sources, uh, mostly uh, Git, uh, Git sources, Git, uh, Git services like GitHub, uh, Bitbucket, GitLab, and so on. Um, um, also, a Git, a single Git uh, repo uh, locally or, uh, or remotely. And we've got uh, a source controller that's a watch, uh, that is uh, able to watch a uh, chart repository. On, uh, on the on the Elm uh, on the Elm ecosystem, we've got the customized controller, uh, which is uh, um, getting the um, the um, configuration files that that are um, that are um, uh, retrieved from uh, from the the GitHub sources, and uh, it aggregates uh, all the configuration files into a, a single uh, resource tree, uh, a single customization resource tree uh, to um, to send to uh, Kubernetes as the, de the, the desired state. And we've got an Elm controller, which does the same, uh, but on the, on the Elm perspective. Uh, all the configuration uh, of um, Flux and of the desired state are stored in uh, CRDs, so uh, something which is very, um, uh, very uh, natural Kubernetes, Kubernetes um, uh, technology. So, in our use case, we've got three per personas, Laurent? Yes, so <coughs> three personas, developer teams, operation teams, security teams. Uh, every team has uh, their own uh, focuses, like the developers want to ship features faster, they want to fix bugs, fix these bugs. They want to, to be autonomous and, and uh, in isolation, but they don't have any uh, operation or run in mind. And uh, of course, not, uh, not security in mind also. Uh, on the other side, we have operation teams that, of course, knows how to run applications, know how to do monitoring, alerting, uh, uh, scalability, resiliency. Uh, they are managing hundreds of clusters uh, across the whole company. And the last one is security. And the security team wants to have like, uh, a centralized way to deploy um, policy, authorization, authentication. And of course, they want to isolate uh, each team on its own sandbox. And they want to, to enforce policies like uh, putting some security account, putting some policy around that, uh, having like uh, ingress or ingresses or egresses a network policy. And you see that every each team has their own uh, focuses and their own um, mindsets. So how do they interact with each other? First, we have like the developer, which pushing code into the repo, have some continuous integration builds that create some uh, images on the container registry. And then we have to deploy that uh, images on the, on the cluster. Then when the ops that's uh, creating some best practices and shared configuration uh, to be able to scale to hundreds of clusters without any, uh, any friction. And of course, they are creating some application config because uh, developers don't use like requests or limits on communities. They, they don't know how to use monitoring, logging, alerting, of course. So uh, the ops team like creates some best practices uh, in a repo and just create some application config in another repo and one for each environment because you know that uh, running in non-production or production is some kind of uh, different cluster, different environment, and of course different configuration. And then uh, the last part and the last person is the security team that will just uh, create some policies, network policies. Uh, we, we will talk about uh, Kiverno or open policy agents and we will try to create some security, security policy on top of that. And so they have their own repo uh, in which we will create some policies and just apply that with uh, Flux. This is, this is the workflows that we are trying to, to create and to push. 
And to do that, first we need to install Flux in our cluster. So everything will be done by just using the Flux CLI. And as Ludovic said, uh, it only creates some YAML file uh, in your laptop or in your workstation. So you have to create that uh, in your laptop and, just, and then just push it on, uh, on uh, GitHub or GitLab. For this example, we, we, we will just create, uh, boost, uh, create uh, some YAML file on GitHub. And it's uh, the only moment that Flux will pin the API of GitHub to just interact with GitHub to put some, uh, some maintainer roles on the repo. For example, for the dev one and dev two team, we will create some maintainer roles uh, on top of that. So we can just have some, uh, some developer workflows like PR, uh, pull, pull requests, reviews, on top of that. And on your, left, on your right, uh, you will see that uh, it creates some uh, YAML files to install uh, Flux and one YAML file that is a tenants.yaml that we will see uh, later on. So we, we, we bootstrap the Flux in our cluster. And this is the, the YAML file created by Flux. So we will we have uh, GOTK sync YAML, which, which creates a Git repository. So the Git repository is only the source, the source of truth uh, of the installation of Flux. And you see that uh, in the same file, we have some customization. And the customization is uh, um, um, something. A convention. A convention. Yeah, a convention, yeah. Uh, exactly. To, to search for a custom, customization.yaml file on the repo. And you see that the customization file is here. And you will see that it will just apply the GOTK components and GOTK sync YAML on the cluster. So if you, are, if you want to just deploy a new version of the file, if you want to update some uh, para parameters, if you want to update your, uh, your, the version of the Flux, you just have to edit the YAML file, just push it to Git, and Flux will, will, will reconciliate this uh, file in your cluster. Then, uh, as I already told you, in this context, we will try to create one namespace per application because we will have like one cluster for our production and one cluster for non-production. And uh, in France, that's, uh, we have seen that uh, in lots of companies. Yeah, of course. And we don't want to manage hundreds of, hundreds of clusters and one cluster per application because uh, it's, uh, it's, not, no, it's, no, it's too, exp too expensive. So we have one production cluster, one static cluster, and every application will live in their own namespace with their own uh, airbag model. So, so, every, Flux, so every application with, with, <coughs> will be isolated from the other, uh, but uh, network connections or something like that. But uh, dev, uh, the Dev1 team um, uh, must not deploy its application in the Dev2 namespace and, uh, and reverse. Yeah. So uh, for setting up the tenants, we have the tenants.yaml file uh, created with Flux. So it, it just uh, creates some, some lines inside the tenants.yaml file to create, uh, for this example, the staging cluster and just say that, OK, you will just watch the GitHub repository, the Git repository that is called Flux system. And it's uh, our senior source of truth. It's uh, based on Git. On top of that, we, we will have to create uh, physically the tenants. So we are creating the airbag file system. So you see that it creates the namespace, uh, dev1.ns. The service account, then dev one that uh, dev one service accounts, and we create some airbag on top of that to be sure that only um, the service account dev one have access to the namespace, and to not be able to conflict with each other on the application. Uh, so that is the um, the content of the tenants.yaml file. But of course, we will have to add some um, some application, some mm -hmm. some some policies around that. So we will add some uh, cluster role. And you see that the cluster role of dev1.ns is, uh, of course, full access. But you can customize it with some more restricted uh, cluster. And 
we will have some deployments replica set pods uh, list watch create update stuff like that and now we have like uh, our namespace our service accounts our cluster role ready to be deployed and it's time to onboard the, the developer with customize so to sum up we have created with flux and to and with only git git push um, on the cluster, the namespaces, the service accounts, uh, the Git source. And now we have to create a new uh, uh, source repo to, to point to the, to the developer team. So let's do that. So we are onboarding the dev team, and we are creating a new YAML file uh, in the tenants. Uh, and I'm not sure if you are familiar with Customize. But just, uh, it relies heavily on customize, and customize have this kind of overlays and base that you can uh, override. override. Yes, override mm -hmm. some some uh, parameters. Mm -hmm. So you create the base uh, file system on customize. Just saying that uh, here is my application. It relies on the github.com slash one Kubernetes slash dev one aspicot application. And it creates a new Git repository source. And you can just push it on, uh, on Git. And of course, Flux will just uh, pull the, the new uh, YAML file and reconciliate that on the cluster. You have, of course, to have some customization with Flux. So you create a new customization. And you will say that, OK, uh, this customization will only deployed application is dev1-ns, and you put some service account name to be able to deploy on that uh, namespace because only dev1 cluster role, dev1 service account, sorry, yeah. will have access to the dev1-ns. So for example, if another team wants to deploy uh, a new application in this namespace in particular, dev1, it will not, it will not have access because they don't have access to a dev1 the service namespace. account. And they don't have access to this uh, particular namespace. No. Of course, all, all of that is, do, is being done by the ops team. So uh, the developer team just say that, OK, here is my repository, and just create some, uh, some parameters in Flux to be able to pull the new application and to deploy that on, uh, on, top, of, on top of Kubernetes. And uh, because it relies on customize, you have to add some overlays on top of customize. And here, you can create some overlays to deploy a new patch. So here, we have created a new patch that basically does nothing, just to have some patch. And then we told customization, customize sorry, to deploy that patch to be able to have the, the base uh, deployments, and on top of that, to have the overlay. It will be useful if you want, for example, to add some requests or limits uh, on top of the application. If you, are, if, wants, if you want to add like secrets, because you know that developers uh, doesn't have access to secrets for databases, for example, but only operations have access to that. So operation can override um, parameters of the application, only creating uh, YAML files and to, to be applied by Flux. And so you, you have clear uh, isolation between developers and operations. I know that uh, working with DevOps, we are trained to, to the two teams to talk to each other. But here we have a, a tool uh, that relies on, on Flux, uh, on, GitHub, on GitHub, to be able to have some uh, collaboration between developers and operations without the, without the, the, the needs to, to, to just talk to each other. Yeah. OK, so here is our final example. I don't know if you want to, to present it. Yeah. Or, yeah. What, we, what we show you uh, very quickly is uh, how to configure a, uh, a Flux component, uh, and then how to configure and uh, maintain a cluster and even uh, um, a group of cluster, and uh, have, have a different um, configuration uh, derivated from a, 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 the same base, the same configuration base. 
And then uh, on top of that, we've got a configuration to deploy here an, uh, a single application for a dev one team, but uh, this is a this might be replicated for a, a lot a lots of com uh, lots of application. So we've got the first configuration, which is uh, the the configuration of, uh, of the Flux component, which is in the, the folder Flux system here, as we have seen uh, before. And this configuration uh, targets uh, the tenants.yaml uh, file, which is, the, te the, which is the, de the description of the tenant that will uh, be the base of the configuration for our cluster. And our cluster is just, um, is just configured by this, uh, uh, this um, uh, couple of files here in the staging, uh, in the staging slash dev1 tenant. Um, and then this, uh, this uh, configuration is an override of uh, a base configuration, which is uh, on top of it uh, in the base uh, folder. And here we, we've got the configuration of the, the dev1 tenant with the uh, namespace isolation, the, um, the service account, the cluster role base, and so, and so on. And in this configuration, we've got uh, a, configuration, the, a configuration of a source, which is in the dev1 uh, aspicot app um, repository. And here we've got the, the couple of files which will be um, uh, able to deploy, well, to, uh, to feed uh, Kubernetes with a deployment instruction uh, for the, uh, the Dev1 Aspicot application. So by uh, um, heavily um, um, uh, relying on uh, the, uh, the um, customized uh, feature, uh, the customized aggregation feature, we are able to, uh, to have um, a single configuration based upon multiple sources. Uh, okay, so now we are able to deploy our applications. We have uh, shown an example based on customized, but you know that Flux can also deploy some hand charts. Now, what I really love about Flux is you can have like one source of truth, one just one repo, and have multiple clusters connected to this repo, and just deploy some uh, some uh, installation of third-party components like Istio, Prometheus, Vault, whatever you want, only uh, only pointing uh, on that uh, on that repo. Of course, you can have also a canary strategy if you want to test like a new version of Istio, a new version of Prometheus. You can just have, uh, for example, uh, uh, service dash uh, blue, service dash green, and just point to the right um, folder and just apply some customized patches to be able to deploy some blue green deployment. To be able to demonstrate that, we we try to create some, we try to install some Prometheus. Uh, chart Helm, Helm chart, sorry. So here we create a new source based on Helm to point to the uh, Prometheus community Helm charts to be able to deploy Git, um, Prometheus, sorry. And to the left, to the right, sorry, we have like values.yaml to configure Helm charts. So now we create some sync YAML file and Flux will, will reconcile that. And here we are, we are creating a new uh, release, uh, hand release, <coughs> sorry, with the value we, are, we have created before just to install Prometheus and to configure Prometheus yeah. more easily, all based on uh, the Git repo, Git repo. And you can see that the values uh, file points to the, to the folder, my cluster slash uh, cube uh, Prometheus stack slash uh, dash value. And here, uh, we can also work with the security team to install, like I say, Istio, Prometheus. Here I install Kiverno. Kiverno is like open policy agents. Uh, you can create some policies, security policies around that. So like before you install Kiverno, you just create a new uh, policy. Here is to enforce uh, on every uh, deployment or every hand chart that the service account is, is enabled and required. So application or operation cannot deploy uh, applications without a service account name to enforce policy. 
and you can just create some policies uh, based on, on, on network security policy or tags or, or whatever. And you just apply this policy with customization. So that's the same mechanism that before. You create some YAML files. You get pushed to that. And of course, it's being deployed on the cluster. But um, you can also benefit from the developer workflows. Like security team can just create some YAML file, create a pull request on GitHub. Uh, with the YAML file, say, OK, can you review my, uh, my security policy? Can you apply that on your cluster? And the ops team or the, 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 the whatever team uh, they want, just accept the pull request or reject the pull request. And it, it's being applied to multiple clusters at once. Uh, that's the same with the developer team. The developer team rem uh, have the maintainer access. So the developer teams can just updates their version of the application easily with pull requests and just apply that in the cluster. Just to sum up and to, to, to conclude this, this talk, uh, if you want to have access to the repository of the workshop we deliver, you can just go github.com slash one communities dash slash workshop. Uh, the slides are on the SCED, uh, the SCED site, so you can just put that. We have some step-by-step -step instructions to be able to, re to replicate that on your own cluster. And of course, if you are French or you speak French, you can just go to github.training, uh, and we will have the slides uh, we delivered for the workshops. Thank you very much for your attention, and thank you for GitOpsCon to, to have invited us. And uh, we can have a break now, if you want. <laughs> yeah. Do we have time for any question? Uh, we, we do have time. We started a few minutes late, so it would yeah. be nice if, you, uh, if there's time for questions. Um, does anyone have any, any questions about their setup, about Flux, Flux. and yeah. yeah.